Okay, um, I wasn't quite done making that last video for Amadine K, but it was getting so long, I was afraid I would, wouldn't be able to upload it. So, um, I want to finish reading. This is what Amadine K, this is what your boyfriend, Andrew Benincasa, this is what he wrote to my elder, I shouldn't say she's elderly, but my aunt, his elder, that, you know, he writes to people. He, it just, it is so, he's so smug and, um, self-righteous and um, he doesn't really take Ava's feelings into consideration and he you know thinks he's like smarter than my aunt who is like a career woman who used to write commercials who um, has you know graduated with honors from a pen you pen an Ivy League school she's just a really dynamic woman and how dare he talk to her this way but so I'm gonna read this and then I'm gonna read couple more things just because I want to fucking read them and have this video on the record um because you know right now a lot of people are just going on what my ex and his lawyer what my ex paid his lawyer to prepare for court or what um he paid a psychologist to say and things like that and obviously it's really misconstrued so it is really true I don't know what he's talking about you can read in the judge's decision which you have if Suzanne goes to a psychiatrist, not only can she have supervised time with Ava, she, in fact, gets back on track to shared custody. Suzanne chooses to obfuscate this fact and chooses not to reveal that she could easily see her daughter, but she is apparently motivated by a powerful desire to not have a psychiatrist see her. Please encourage her to go. Okay, I've already seen two psychiatrists, so I'm not motivated by a powerful desire to not... I'll see another psychiatrist, but I can't afford the um, to psychiatrist they want me to see. If they, wanna, if they wanted... Ava to have a mother in their life, they would pay because it's nothing for them to pay that kind of money. And then I get, okay, so what he's talking about is, um, this is a really fucked up abusive court order that Judge Julie Marino of Hunter and County made that, um, was based on what my ex's very expensive lawyer said, um, and I was unrepresented. So that I could go to see another psychiatrist because she wouldn't accept the first two psych, psych exams. Uh, four, four psych exams total, two psychological, two psychiatric. So by a psychiatrist. She wouldn't accept any of that. So she wants me to pay $5,000 to be able to pay two, 800 a month to see my daughter for four hours. Uh, these are things that are designed for to protect children from seriously dangerous parents, from like abusive, physically abusive parents or alcoholics or something. But it's being, but it's you know, to have the money, like... And you have the lawyer you can use it's being used by vindictive exes to there's just this watch divorce corp amandine just watch divorce corp i mean watch watch alec baldwin's um interview on larry king i mean get a clue the financial penalties you mentioned are not connected to Suzy's ability to see ava she says that a lot on social media i can only assume it's because she's trying to find excuses not to see a psychiatrist <laughs> The financial penalties were rendered because the court saw how Suzanne acted in bad faith for years and dragged out the process. The process. Financially punishing my brother because she didn't want shared custody. To help Suzanne, you need to be able to parse fact from fiction. She can parse fact from fiction, Andy. Obvi Sorry, this is not too Andy, but obviously Andy Benincasa cannot parse fact from fiction. I mean, he th that is insane. I, how is it impossible for me to drag out a process that I didn't start my ex dragged me through family court. I didn't drag him into this, nor did I. And, and it was actually his lawyer who came, who dragged the, the um, trial out from April to December, not me. Thanks for reading your poem. I believe your feelings are real and that you love Ava. I mean, just get a load of this. <clears throat> but also, but I also have to hold you accountable, not just to feelings of love, but also realities of harm. My family, the psychiatrist, the therapist, the judge, the social workers. Okay, hold right there. What the hell is he talking about? There have been no psychiatrists. He's talking about the psychologist, Jonathan Wall, that his brother paid $30,000 to. <laughs> the therapist. I don't know what therapist he's talking about. Oh, he's also talking about probably Ty Culliner of New Hope, Pennsylvania, who oh, my ex-husband has been seeing this therapist. I posted to her on, on uh, Facebook. You can look her up, Ty Culliner. Um, this woman in New Hope who has like really bad ratings who's been taking him on such a ride Okay, he's been seeing her for 10 years. So first of all, why isn't he cured now? I guarantee if he goes to like a, a reputable place like Lenape Valley Foundation where there's actually like people overseeing 
um, you know, these, a lot of these therapists that are completely independent work out of their homes and stuff. Nobody's, nobody's supervising their work and it's, um, <laughs> you know, he goes and pays her $50 a week. Sometimes he goes to her twice a week. It is so sad because, uh, he's not making any progress and, and I, and of course she has no, like, Okay, like at Lenape Valley, like they're getting paid by Lenape Valley, so they, you don't have to pay for the therapy. So, <laughs> so obviously you can get much better therapy there because they're not motivated to keep you in there for ten years. Don't you see that? Like, don't you get that? Um, so that's what he's talking about. So so far, he's talking about him, his family, and a bunch of people they paid. Okay. Uh, the social workers have all testified to Suzanne's abusiveness. No, they didn't. Again, ask Andy Benicasa to show you one, you know, one thing that says I was abusive. There isn't any. We have documented her behavior. We have corroboration of a history of abuse in the family. No, you don't. This is just completely made up. I, plus, like, I have corroboration of a history of abuse in the Benicasa family. I mean, like, man and Joe forced... Andy to get an enema when he was 10, or they get forcibly gave him an enema when they were 10. Chris told me that man used to beat the shit out of him. She was abusive to Ava. I witnessed that. So, like, I mean, you want to talk about that? Like, we could do that. Of course, I don't, you know, again, I don't have a lawyer, so it all comes back to how much, you know, how much you can spend in family court. Um, so he's making up a bunch of bullshit. I have asked you to look at it different ways. And most recently have been asking you to follow her social media in order to follow the shape of her psyche. Yeah, please do. Follow. <laughs> you refused. You looked away. He's a fucking drama queen. All this evidence puts Suzanne's need for help and a certainty of harm she poses to Ava without it. I know that some, please, I hope you're like one of my friends or family members. So many people have come to bat for me who have actually witnessed me. Um, no, I'm not abusive. No, this is just insanity. And um, really, like at the end of the day, the only person who um, whose opinion matters is Ava to me. Um, I mean, I know a lot of people know me and they know I'm not abusive and they know my ex-brother-in-law is completely and forever out to lunch. But um, at the end of the day, all I care about is Ava. Ava's going to know the truth. Ava already knows the truth. So, my psyche. All this evidence points to Zan's need for help and a certainty of harm she poses to Ava. You have the luxury of avoiding her abuse, of not looking at it, pretending it can't be that bad. Social media is not that important and that she's only doing it now because of the separation when, in fact, the abusiveness is why my brother left her in the first place. Okay. I'm going to stop and tell a little story there. Although, again, this video is getting too long. I don't know how long I'm going to... Anyway. All right. So, I'm going to tell a little story about my ex-husband. He, I was his second wife. He was married before. His first wife, he came home one day. She and had taken all her stuff and gone to her boy, new boyfriend's house, which was three miles down the road. Um, his name was Mel Freeman. And he, um, a very wealthy, retired lawyer that she was taking tennis lessons from. That hurt my ex-husband's ego. He never even told me, his wife. I had, you know, to find that out through her. And, um was really funny about it but that's another story so no he didn't leave me because of that first of all I left him I actually left the house he didn't you know and then he filed for divorce and made a federal case out of it um but it's like oh don't you see that I mean if Andy Benicasa says his brother left me because I was abusive then that's the end of the story when it's really not okay so <laughs> all right then my highest responsibility is to Ava and no one else that's bullshit Ava you are when Ava realizes that you were in on this, cutting her mother out of her life stuff, she's going to know that you were not acting in her best interest, Andy. I mean, Amadine. If you refuse to take seriousness, the abusiveness of Suzanne, which every professional third party um, with access to observation had documentation of the case, the abusiveness which my family has suffered for years, the abusiveness which could seriously harm Ava, then though I can see you love Ava, but I don't believe you are you are act responsibly responsibly for Ava's well-being. Okay. So 
So if my aunt doesn't believe that I'm abusive because she's known me my whole life and witnessed me with my daughter and knows that I'm a good mom and I'm not abusive, if she doesn't, so Andy is saying that if she doesn't um, <laughs> agree with him that I'm abusive, that she's not acting in Ava's well-being. When really all my aunt has been doing is advocating for Ava's basic human rights, the right to have a mother, and trying to end this crazy high conflict divorce that my ex started. Below is a post I made about my, last week about my family's experience. And this was the personal note about abuse that he wrote and it was like full of lies. And I'm not gonna read it again because I had that in another video, which hopefully you've seen. I'm just gonna read um, my mom's response to Andy's letter because and she hasn't responded to Andy, but she responded to my aunt and you know, um, I think my mom says it pretty well, so instead of just telling you, trying to come up with something, let me just read what she wrote. I just wanted to wretch when reading what Andy wrote to you. So much BS it's hard to take. The only way they can justify stealing Ava is to invent stories of abuse. Suzanne never abused Chris or Ava, of course. It is just too much. And corroboration of abuse in our family? What corroboration? For this that matter, Kate, Andy, and Chris all told Suzanne that Nan was an abusive mother. As for the therapist, what is Andy talking about? As you know, Suzanne did go to two psychiatrists. They took Ava. They lied in court. Chris won't even allow them one phone call a week. Suzanne followed everything the judge asked her to do. Supervised visits, seeing the psych, seeing therapists, etc. Suzanne never said that his parents were the cause of Kate's death. Actually, Chris said that to Suzanne, and they were together because when they were together because Chris, because Kate was bulimic as a teenager and Nan knew and did nothing about it. They actually, they eventually all went um, had a group therapy session to deal with it. Nan really pushed Kate to be thin. She was a bit overweight and pushed her to be a cheerleader and condoned the bulimia in her and by her silence. We know all this because Su Chris told Suzanne. You know, he complained about his mother daily and Suzanne defended her. That's true. My ex used to complain. My ex-husband, Chris Benicosta, used to complain that his mother, Nana Benicosta, abused him. He used to say, she beat the shit out of me with a wooden spoon. She did this, she did that. Oh, she was so horrible. Oh, she was the, you know, he... <laughs> I actually used to defend my ex-mother-in-law, the one who paid a lawyer to do all this, to separate and wanted total control of my daughter. And is, you know, I actually used to say, come on, it could not have been that bad. But, you know, now I believe it because I didn't realize how screwed up they all were. You know he complained about his mother daily and Suzanne defended her. Suze, Suze is very worried about Nan's influence on Ava. Looking over our shoulders in public places, talk about guilty, conscious, emotional abuse. Separating Ava and Suzanne is real abuse. Children who are separated from their mothers have shorter lifespans, higher suicide rates, and many different types of psychological problems that are lifelong. Mothers su suffer equally. We have no idea what he means by emotional abuse of Ava except... We know for sure that they are the abusers. We have all the proof needed that Suzanne tried to talk to Chris out of taking the route he took, that she invited him here to talk or go to a public place many times to talk if he was uncomfortable coming to her home. She did this so many times and Chris refused because he'd rather build a case that I was keeping Ava from him, even though I was really not. No one observed abuse. No one. No doctor, no person, no court. The woman who stopped the supervision, supervised visitation and said she did so because Suzanne whispered to Ava which is not allowed, and because she tried to get away from being supervised. Suzanne said it was impossible to whisper to Ava because they were so closely watched, and it was Ava who got upset and said to the women there, everyone get away, I want to be alone with my mom. It's true because when Ava was taken and I was put into supervised visitation, she was still nursing at the time. So of course when she would see me at Carol Divorce Place, she would want to nurse because she was nursing up until that point. Now, we could go into a whole separate debate about extended breastfeeding, um, I think it's perfectly natural and fine, and but, you know, regardless, this was Ava. She wanted to nurse, and oh boy, they didn't like that. Even though one of the women at Safe Harbor was um, also part of the La Leche League, so I was really surprised by that, but, you know, it's like a club for rich women in Flemington who want to say they're doing good in the community, so, you know, whatever. It was like... Just insane. So basically, my daughter wanted to nurse. And she wanted to be alone with me, naturally. But we never tried to get away. Um, everybody get away. I want to be alone with my mom. A few times, they were allowed to go outside. Supervised, of course. And once, Ava ran behind a shed. Suzanne followed, and so did the supervisor. Of course, Ava hated the supervision. 
Suzanne said the woman would sit very close to them so they could hear everything that was said. The first few visits, Ava clung to Suzanne when it was time to go, sobbing and holding on to Suzanne's hair. Another time, she took, took string that Suzanne had brought for crafting and tried to tie herself to Suzanne. It was traumatic for both of them. Suzanne tried to comfort Ava and to calm her down, and the women reprimanded her for not disciplining Ava. This is not a he said, she said situation. They committed perjury. Yes, Suzanne has spoken out and attacked them on social media, exposing them because what they are doing to Ava and Suzanne is criminal and family court is corrupt. And because despite Suzanne's pleas to stop the insanity and agree to do what's best for Ava, Chris would not stop and now has to back up his lies with more lies. They have pu pushed Suzanne into a corner. Every mother has to ask themselves what they would do if their child was taken for that. Thanks, Mom. All right, and um, one last thing that I'm going to read is uh, a letter that my, Joe Benincasa wrote to my aunt, and it says, Thank you for your letter. Like you, I hope we can unify the Cutler and Benincasa families. Now, Joe Benincasa says, like, he, he says the things that sound good. So, but he lies. If he wanted to unify the Cutler and Benincasa families, he could do so easily. I mean, all he has to do is come visit. He has an open invitation. The only way to really unify families after a high conflict divorce is just to stop the high conflict divorce. I mean, this could drag on literally till Ava's 18 easily. It does, they, the courts do it all the time and it's sick. So if you want to unify the families, let's all meet like the Cutler family, the Benincasa family. Let's all meet in the park, drop your stupid, um, bullshit rest restraining orders. Meet with the Angelo family, meet with the Kohlhofer family, Brenda Brenner, and all of them. And like, let's get some other families involved. Um, you know, Amadine K, bring your family, and we'll see. Like, you can all witness the reunification of, of Ava and her mother and see and make your own, you know, judgments about about that. I, I totally welcome all of this. I'm sick of this and I want it to be totally open and honest and transparent. So Ava is doing so well. Chris is providing wonderful and responsible caring. That's bullshit because no child who's lost their mother is doing so well. Uh, to deny that's very sick. Um, and alienating a child from one of their parents is not wonderful, responsible parenting. Um, and then he says again that he's shocked. I refuse help and that, you know, he wishes I would start working towards towards shared custody. Okay, once again, he I have to get $5,000 for a lawyer. No, I'm sorry, $5,000 for a psych cell. Then I have to pre ask the lawyer, I mean the judge, if that psychiatrist, if that meets her, like if, she, if she's okay with me using that one, then she has to read the evaluation. Then I can begin supervised therapeutic visitation. So I only would get, so Ava, think of it from her perspective, not mine. Ava only gets to see her mother, who she hasn't seen in a year, one hour a week. Um, and then if that therapist says, tells the judge, so I'd have to pay him or her to come to court. I mean, this is tens of thousands of dollars just to be able to be in my child's life. This is sick, really, really sick. And, um, this is parental alienation people. This is a severe form of abuse. Um, yeah, I'm not attacking anyone, but I am going to speak out about it. I mean, if you... If your child was being abused, you would too, I am sure. Um, I love you, Ava. I hope you're not watching this, but I know that someday you're gonna figure all this stuff out. Oh, that's another thing. If I go to this psychiatrist, the fifth or sixth psychiatrist I've seen, if they also give me a clean bill of mental health, like the first five did, and say that I'm fit and sane and intelligent. So Ava will say, why didn't you, someday she'll say to them, why didn't you accept the psychiatrist and psychologist the first time and they'll say well the judge didn't accept it will that really be good enough would that really be good enough for you if you lost your mother if somebody said that so what they're going to do is make me spend 50 to a hundred thousand dollars which I don't have just to prove to the courts that I'm fit to s and that my daughter would benefit from a relationship with me by the time I do all that, Ava might be seven or eight years old. She's six and a half now. So she will have gone from age four till age eight without a mother in her life while I go through hell to, you know, jump through hoops after hoop after hoop trying to prove that um, she does deserve to have a mother in her life and that I'm, I would be a good part of her life. <laughs> I already was. So, so in other words, you're punishing Ava that much by keeping her mother out of her life on the off, you know, and making it impossible for me to prove that 
um, my daughter deserves to have a mom, me. So obviously you're doing this to punish me, but the one who suffers the most, the one who, the ones who always suffer the most in any high conflict divorce are the children. Um, Alec Baldwin wrote a whole book about it. Um, okay, uh, that's 20 minutes, so I'll stop this, but, um, I feel like I rambled a little, but, you know, I want people to get an idea of who I really am, and, um, and so, yeah, so this, so, I'm a Dean K, I hope you, you watch this, um, I hope you reach out to me, I hope you decide to try to really help Ava to stop this abuse of me and her, and, um, you know, I hope, um, I hope this whole mess comes to an end soon. Anyone watching this, anyone watching this who wants to talk about parental alienation can call me 215-919-7711. Um, I'm here. The Benincasas are trying to have me put in jail on November 27th, I think it is. So um, I'm just going to keep making these videos and until then, so that hopefully someone can help talk some sense into them, let Ava see her mom free Ava Benincasa, um, and you know, just so that in case I do go to jail for however long, um, I want to put this out there, um, before I do. All right. More on that later. Thank you.